Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project I'm working on. This is a part off of our steam locomotive out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. And um, I went out there, when I took it off, I shot a little video to kind of show you where it goes, what it does. And uh, I think we're gonna cut to that now to kind of give you an introduction to this project. Well guys, I'm out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture this morning and up in the cab of the Vulcan steam locomotive. Yesterday, while they were out here um, making rounds, had a little mishap, I guess you could say. This is the uh, brake cylinder, or actually it's the control valve for the brake cylinder. Uh, when you turn this handle, it uh, turns the, the brakes on and off, and voila, uh, stem broke in here and uh, caused them to not have any brakes. Fortunately, they were able to stop the locomotive fine. But my job is to repair this thing, get it back up and going. So uh, I wanted you guys to see this up in the cab, uh, just to kind of see where it goes. And uh, we're going to be pulling this thing out and uh, seeing what we can do to fix it. So I was able to pull this off the locomotive and I brought it back in. Basically to pull it off was fairly simple. There was just a couple of uh, pipes that had to be disconnected. All of them had unions on them uh, because this is something that has to be serviced from time to time. So the steam comes in the side. Uh, this valve here is for an oiler. There's oil that comes in and it just puts a little bit of tiny bit of oil into the steam and that lubricates the, um, the steam piston in there that applies the brakes. And then on the bottom, we have the steam that goes to the, uh, the steam brake, and then we have an exhaust valve. So when the steam or when the brakes are off, the steam is basically just going out the exhaust. Uh, when you put the steam on or put the brakes on, the steam pressure is going to the brakes. So we're gonna go ahead now and uh, tear into this thing, get our broken part out, and uh, come up with a game plan on how we're gonna go about fixing this, this item. I'm gonna start by just taking the four bolts off. I don't wanna take any of these pipes off unless I just absolutely have to. Uh, that way when we get done with this, it'll be ready to just go back in. We won't have to worry about repositioning pipes and getting them um, in the right orientation again. I will comment that there is a mark over here on the side uh, where I know where to line this up when it goes back together. Uh, that was on there from previous times when this valve has been gotten into. I actually did a video some time back where we did some work to this valve. Uh, we did some rebuilding in here. I'm not sure, but this part that broke may have even been one that we uh, made when we did this last time, which we pretty much did an exact copy of what was in there before. So um, I'm going to be looking at that to see if we can figure out a weak point in here and uh, if possible eliminate that so we don't have to do this job again uh, in a few more years. Let's go ahead and uh, get these bolts off and we'll show you what we got. I remember there is a spring in here, so that's why it's uh, kind of feels like it's under spring pressure here. And uh, we were running the train yesterday, so this had steam in it. Of course, when that steam cools, it condenses and you get water in these uh, little fixtures like this all the time. Uh, we'll let that water just drain out, no big deal. This uh, nut's wanting to be stubborn. When I wrote, did this last time, we used the same hardware and these bolts are fine thread. I'm not sure why, but they are. I have no idea if they're original to this valve or they were replaced sometime in the past. I suspect they probably were replaced at some time in the past. I don't know if, if it originally had fine threads on it, but we're going to leave it like it is. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I don't think it would matter anyway. All right. Okay. So here 
here is the part where we got our issue at. There's a spring down there. I want to remember that this uh, side here is facing toward me in the current position. It's got a little ear on here so that it only can turn a quarter of a turn up inside uh, that valve body we just took off. All right. Uh, yeah, I see what's going on. We'll go ahead and get this cleaned up and show you what's happening here. Thought I'd show you how this valve works before we really go any further. So you see there's, there's two holes down here. Uh, this one goes to the brake cylinder. This one is your exhaust. And you got this little piece here that floats on here. Last time we had this apart, we remachined this and lapped it so we had a real nice, good, tight fit between the two. Um, on this casting, you look, uh, let's get that in frame, you look and there's, there's three holes in it. One of the holes, this big hole, it goes all the way through. These other two holes are actually, the casting is cored they're connected to one another, so they're kind of a bypass. So when the brake is off, it sits on here like such, where these two holes here line up. So basically what happens is any steam pressure that's in that line from the cylinder, it can exhaust over here. It can release that steam out, and it just goes out the exhaust. When you turn the handle a quarter of a turn, it moves this valve around over here, lines up the hole in the top with the hole that goes to the, um, the, the brake valve. And basically inside that bell, you have live steam in here. So the steam is always pressing down on this. And when the valve is on, it goes straight down in there. It applies pressure to the brakes of a cylinder. And uh, when you turn it off, it releases the brake and basically the steam is just captured. It's not going anywhere when it's off. But any pressure that's in the valve can exhaust out through the exhaust. So that's kind of what we got going on here. Um, this piece on the top, there's a little uh, piece that engages in here. It's spring loaded. Let's this piece float, and as it wears, it it, it moves down, and uh, this is what connects to the valve stem that goes up. Again, there's this piece inside here, and that basically limits up inside of that bell casting. There stops, and that limits uh, how far the valve will turn. So here you can see the handle, and uh, it's broken off. It snapped off. Here's the. Uh, casting here you can see down the bottom where it broke there is a hole that's drilled through this and it's that's really kind of the weak point and there's a spring pin in there that uh in basically connects these two together and what happened is, is it's just a weak cross section across that that pin hole but i really don't know what we can do to eliminate that other than maybe drill a smaller hole in there and use a smaller spring pin um, I don't remember if we drilled that out larger last time or not, but uh, I may I may do that this time and just put a um, have it go 90 degrees to it and put just make a whole new hole all the way through there and use a little bit smaller diameter uh, pin. I think it'll be fine. So that's the game plan. Let's uh, let's get this out and uh, we'll go ahead and take this handle apart and machine us a new new valve stem. Got my little bench anvil here. This just has uh, holes drilled in it and it's, it's great for kind of supporting something like this and a uh, pin punch. There we go, we got that pin knocked out. Now, see if we can get that uh, broken piece out. That may be the challenging part. Just taking a screwdriver and see if I can loosen that up in there. It is turning a little bit. May have to go over to my vise. I don't want to take this off my here. I may go use my other vise to get that out.
So I've been looking at this, trying to figure out how to do this and make it work out where this was a little bit stronger. And I've decided I want to make this stem that goes down inside of this casting here a little bit larger. Uh, looks like we've got a really thick wall all around the top here. Uh, that's measuring uh, 900 thousandths in diameter. We got about 700 thousandths in diameter down here on the thinner part. The hole inside of here was 3 eighths inch. Uh, which is 375,000. So I, what I'm going to do is enlarge it up. I, I started to go to half inch, but I said, yeah, it might be a little bit thin when it gets down to this uh, 700 thou part. I only leave 100 thou of wall on either side. So I compromised, went halfway between 3 eighths and uh, half, excuse me, half inch, and uh, that's a 7 sixteenths inch, which is, uh, uh, what is that, 4375. So we're going to add fair amount of beef to that stem and hopefully that will keep it from breaking in the future. So I just got a drill bit in here. I've actually got a stop set. I'm only going to drill down to about the bottom of this larger diameter to try to keep it out of that smaller diameter down below. And uh, I've got a stop set on here that should stop me. And I should be fairly well centered up on there. And that just wants to suck in this brass. Suck down in there. That's to depth right there. And uh, we're good enough. So I will now make a new stem to fit this new size hole. The stem has a diameter of 5 eighths inch and I was able to find a piece of 3 quarter inch brass here in the shop to make this out of. So uh, we're going to make it out of that, turn it down to the proper size. Start with, I need to uh, face this back side. Just get rid of that saw cut that's on there. So we'll come in here. All right, that's good. And next, I want to put a center in here so that uh, I can get some support on this when I'm turning it to that longer length. So just a center drill. All right, that should work for a center. I need an area that's turned down uh, to five eighths, four inches. So I'm just going to come in here. We'll turn it down just a tad over that. I'm just going to put a mark here. I do have this uh, with a center on the end to kind of help support it. And uh, we're going from, um, just double check here. Yeah, three quarters. Um, Three quarters to five eighths, so we got 125 thou to come off of there. We still got about uh, 90,000 to go. I'll take 80,000 and we'll come back and finish up with a little pass there at the end. See where we're at. So uh, looks like we got about a lot. six thou needs to come off. Dial that in.
like we're right on the money. 625, maybe a half a thou under. Next step is I want to turn that little piece that's going to fit down in that little hole that we just drilled out. It needs to be 0.4375 in diameter and needs to be 450 thousandths deep. I'm going to start by marking my depth. I'm just taking a marker here. Putting some contrast where I can see. I've got my caliper set, 450 thousandths. And now I got a mark on there that I can uh, turn down to. Got to get a little less than 200 thou to take off this diameter, so uh, we'll just work our way down to it. Stopping just a little shy of that line. Still got about a hundred thou to go here. About fifty thou. I'm going to dial in forty, thirty. 40 right there. And I got about five more to come out there. I think that's going to be just right. Now I want to uh, come in here and get that shoulder just right. That'll do it. Now let's just break those corners. Thing here. All right. Now I'll put on a parting tool and cut this off the length. Got my part flipped around now and you can see on this other side I've got a uh, threaded area there that happens to also be uh, 7 16 just like the side we were on a minute ago so uh, we'll turn that down to the same diameter it's 450 thousand steep and then we'll have to mill the square on there uh, in another step so let's go ahead and get that stem turned down to diameter and get some threads cut start I'm just gonna face the bottom lightly there Got a little bit of a material left over from when we parted it off. Just like before, I'll blacken this up. Let me mark there at four and thousand steep. Cut her down the size.
35, 37, somewhere like that. It's a 30,000 cut. We'll get another measurement after this one. All right, I'm at. Four forty. I just need to fuzz off about two thousand. To do it. Good job. Now let's get set up for threading. I want to break these corners here. And now let's get set up for threading. Hi, we are set up here for threading. We're cutting 14 threads per inch. I've got my uh, lead screw going here uh, to engage on half nuts to do uh, single point threading. Total depth needs to be 62 thousandths is the total that I need to cut out of there. So uh, I'm gonna wait for a number to roll around here. We're gonna make a test cut and uh, see how this thing goes. Let's uh, check that with my pitch gauge. Scratch pass here. I'm just barely touching it so I can uh, make sure we're good. Everything looks good. So uh, let's uh, feed in here a little bit and wait for a number to come around. And we got 62,000 to take out of there. on our depth now. A little bit more. We're getting right down to our depth here. Let's see how this one fits. There we go. It's exactly what we want right there. My next step here is I need to mill these flat squares on here. Uh, this is for the handle to fit onto, like such. And uh, to do that, I've taken the stem that I've done and I put it into a square collet block. So this is a, takes a 5C collet and it's just square. I've got one of these in square and hex. And it's for doing just that. I can mill the top and just rotate this part around in the four positions and uh, it will be perfectly squared and I don't have to use an index or anything like that to get the job done. So I'm just going to put that in there. Uh, according to my measurements, uh, this is about 540 thou square. It's a little over a half inch. I think it's just worn over the years, but no problem. We'll just uh, machine that stem to match the size of the hole. Lower this thing down close raise our table up until we just start 
touching off. All right, we're just touching right there. I'm going to zero that out. And I know from doing the math, we got a 5 8 inch diameter there. We need to go to 540 thou and um, need to basically come down 42 and a half thou uh, around each one. So I'm going to start by just dialing in 30 thou down and we'll come back and get a good measurement and go from there. So uh, I'm just going to come across that face. I'm going to go back. I've got a line marked on there. All right, we should be able to just rotate that part now. And 90 degrees. I just got that collet chuck straight up to that face on the jaw. back across this thing. I've got this little casting here that has my hole through it. I'm just going to use the same size uh, pin we used before. I've got a 5 30 seconds drill bit lined up on those two holes. What we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and put our our piece in. I've got a mark on here indicating the direction I want the pin to go. I've already kind of staged that out over there. Tell you what, let me get a something to tap that just a time or two. So uh, we are ready now to drill that hole out. Put our pin back in. There we go. That should do it. I think we're ready to reassemble this. This will go in here. Let's get our stem coming up through the That should be lined up. And that's the range of motion there for the uh, valve, except I'm in the wrong position here. That's where it needs to be right there. So that valve needs to go like that. There we go. Let's uh, put our screws back in here rather and tighten this thing down. Make sure these are all good and tight. And we had a washer on top here. We'll tighten this on, this nut on here. Voila, one brake valve. 
back in gear, back and ready to go. Um, the only thing that will need to be done is there's some packing that goes in here. And um, see, it kind of looked like this right here. And it blew out. So uh, they're going to have to repack this. They can do that out at the museum. they got some more packing out there. I don't have any here in my shop. And that just keeps the steam from coming up around that stem. Uh, but other than that, this is ready to go back onto the locomotive. Well, there you go. One steam locomotive brake valve uh, back in operation. Uh, I take this out to the museum and let them put it in there. Like I said, we'll let them put the packing back in here, but uh, this should be ready to go. And with that little modification that we made by making the stem diameter just a little bit larger down here in the bottom where it broke off, hopefully this won't be a reoccurring project for me again down the road. And uh, with that, that's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Comments are appreciated. Thumbs up are as well. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys.